Yeah. So traditionally, you know, if you think about a typical art history lecture, an exhibition, a museum, or a textbook, you're dealing with at most a few hundred images. So what happens when you start dealing with history and contemporary culture as data, right? And you're thinking about the scale of Flickr, YouTube, where you know the numbers are now in the millions and billions, right? So it becomes difficult to use you know traditional techniques, be it slides or a laptop screen to analyze data at the scale. That's why new cutting-edge visual technologies, such as hyperspace constructed at tool, perfectly, are perfectly suited for this research. So we're beginning to work with larger and larger collections. You know, uh, this is just uh, 2,000 images selected from an art store. An art store at this point houses over 800,000 images. But in fact, if you go to Google and do Google image search, you're going to find tens of millions of paintings from 20th century alone. And this is the scale of data which, which we want to analyze and visualize in really develop ways uh, to teach and publicly present and research cultural data at that scale. Well, in the fall of last year, we analyzed small amounts of cultural data in different media. We look at paintings, we look at films, we look at cartoons, we look at few hours of a gameplay. And now we got this uh, amazing grant Right, to use Department of Energy supercomputers, uh, 250,000 equivalent of Cray hours. So this will allow us for the first time you know, in the kind of history of human, human culture and human media to analyze millions and millions of cultural records to be able to discover the patterns in human cultural activity, dynamics, people playing games, you know, and so on and so forth, which we didn't never saw before. So here you're looking at the graph of uh, gameplay, which we created. The game in question is RES, released by Sony a few years ago. We've done computer analysis of a video of what happens on the screen, and we're able to extract different types of activities which happen when a player engages with a game. Uh, so in this case, different colors you know, correspond to different modes, right? or as I said, different activities. Uh, so for the first time, we're able to analyze temporal patterns of gameplay. Uh, and um, here's a legend. So as you can see, we can extract about you know, half a dozen different uh, types of activities, you know, playing, going to the next level, getting upgrades, and so on and so forth. So this is an example of a small scale case study we have done in the fall of 2008, leading to our application, uh, which you know, we received to use Department of Energy supercomputers, which will allow us to analyze millions of our history images, you know, uh, thousands of feature films, animation, so on. So in this case, I wanted to just to test if our ideas are going to work. So I started with a set of canonical 35 images, which illustrate the development of art from mid 19th century realism, through impressionism, post-impressionism, and leading up to early 20th century geometric abstraction. You know, from Corbet to Malevich. So what you're seeing here is one of his paintings uh, and, uh, and different graphs which show you kind of different visual parameters, different visual, sort of, uh, different visual qualities of his paintings automatically extracted by a computer. And then uh, on this side, you get different graphs where you can see this painting in the context of a, of a larger set. Right? So for example, on this graph on the left, uh, you see a kind of trend line, right, which goes through all these paintings uh, based on the analysis of very formal properties. Things like color, grayscale, contrast, orientation of lines. And you can see the line quite convincingly corresponds to at least what in my mind uh, I imagine when I think about this development from realism to modernism. Around 1870, the things are going to get faster. And around 1905, the speed of cultural evolution increases quite dramatically. And uh, the red dot, where it corresponds to this particular painting, so you can see how different or how similar this painting is to the whole set. Uh, on this graph at the bottom, uh, you know, we plotted separately with different parameters. So uh, the lines of different colors correspond to you know, different visual parameters which we analyzed. Again, color, grayscale, saturation, hue. Uh, and here we see that um, 
you know, like in any scientific research, you start with particular hypotheses, and not all your hypotheses are going to be confirmed. So originally I thought, but as I move from Corbea you know, to Mondrian and Malevich, all these numbers are going to go up. But what we find is that, for example, uh, in terms of lightness or contrast, indeed, you know, the paintings are getting lighter and uh, they're getting, you know, the contrast is getting higher, but to my surprise, they're not getting more saturated. And that's because in this particular image set, when you move to kind of modernist abstraction, uh, the paintings are actually feature lots of white, right? So you can see how by doing this science-like kind of hypothesis testing, uh, it kind of gives you a different way to look at history of art. 